Bernard. Hi, happy Monday, and welcome to Now, the fun show hosted by me, Curtis B. Now, today we're kicking the entire show off talking about a more serious topic, but the biggest topic in the news today, that being Nelson Mandela's funeral. Tomorrow is the day of the big service with over 100 current and former world leaders attending. The service will take place at the Soweto FNB Stadium, which has a capacity of 95,000 people. And with a service like this, you can expect it to be packed. And because of the number of dignitaries that will be attending, large amounts of security have been brought in to take care of this. Canada's current Prime Minister Stephen Harper and former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien will be in attendance. U.S. President Barack Obama will be there as well to give a special speech. In a true sign of coming together for a common cause, Cuban leader Raul Castro will be at the same event on the same stage giving another speech, though of course not at the same time. People in South Africa will be able to watch the entire thing on TV or at the many overflow locations. Nelson Mandela passed away on Thursday in his home at the age of 95. Moving into something that will hopefully put a smile on your face, WestJet Canada released their Christmas video today and the only word that comes to my mind when I watch it is awesome. WestJet set up this really fun interactive Santa thing in one of their terminals, allowing you to talk in real time to Santa and tell him what you wanted for Christmas. The funny thing that they didn't know is while they were on their flight to their destination, at the destination, WestJet employees were already gathering up all the gifts they asked for. And when they arrived at the baggage carousel, all of the gifts were there for them. Now, whether this is real or fake, it doesn't matter. It's meant to put a smile on your face and a warm feeling in your heart. Another sign that WestJet Canada really does care about the people that fly with its airline. Because arguably, and in my personal opinion, WestJet is the only way to go. Suck it, Air Canada! Popping into a quick piece of news here, Roaring Heights! Yes, there's some more Sims 3 news for all of you. The Sims 3 team will be hosting a live broadcast tomorrow on their Twitch account. You can find that at www.twitch.tv slash The Sims. They'll be hosting it tomorrow, Tuesday the 10th at 10 p.m. Pacific time. Of course, go and check it out tomorrow. It's gonna be tons of fun. I will be watching it. I'll have a recap on Wednesday if you missed it. Hopefully they'll be talking about, of course, the new town and the new world and, of course, the brand new roller coasters. So tune in tomorrow, 10 p.m. Link down in the description below. A little recap on the weekend here. Looks like Rebecca Black is back in the news because she released a new song. It's called Saturday. Yes, the sequel to Friday is officially here and surprisingly, it's it's not that bad. Her brand new music video currently has over 9 million views and was uploaded on Saturday, December 7th, starring another prominent YouTuber, Dave Days, and surprisingly, it has more likes than dislikes, which is pretty awesome. You can currently download the song on iTunes if you wish and go and check out the video for yourself Link in the description down below. It's a fun video, I think it's got a catchy tune, and I found myself watching it multiple times over and over, so that's a good sign. What's not a good sign though? President Putin closing news agencies and starting his own. Yes, just another sign of dictatorship in Mother Russia. Putin is working to tighten controls over Russian media. Today announcing the closure of a Russian media agency, the RIA, and in its place creating a brand new media agency otherwise known as Russia Today, which will focus primarily on promoting Moscow to the other parts of the world. Propaganda! In charge of promoting Moscow to the rest of the world is, well, none other than a conservative media anchor Dmitry Kislov, who has been appointed to the position. This will be yet another Russian media station that is pushed to be loyal towards Putin, because few media stations in the country are actually opposing him, and those that do are finding it harder and harder to stay alive. And last in the world of news, let's talk about Facebook and the fact that they might be changing that like button, at least depending upon what your mood is when you post your status. Facebook is actually thinking about implementing a button for sympathize. So if you write a status update and when you put in your emotion, you put sad or depressed pressed, the actual like button will change to sympathize. So if I post on Facebook that I got in a car accident, I'm fine, but my vehicle is totaled, people wouldn't be able to like it, they'd be able to sympathize with me. This being because like is considered very blunt for gloomy situations, such as of course death, or like a relationship status change, because that's not something you want to like. Though maybe you do, because maybe you didn't like the fact that those two were together and you like the fact that they're separate. That makes you a bad person. But what do you think about the idea of changing the like button depending upon the mood of the person posting on Facebook? Do you think it's a good idea? Yes? No? What ever do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. You can also let me know on my Facebook page, Twitter account, or through Google+. Links to all that and the other topics I talked about in today's episode in the description down below. Check out all the links down there, tons of really cool stuff. Of course, if you enjoyed today's show, why not hit that like button, subscribe, and maybe even share the show with your friends. Until next time, I'm Curtis Parody, and that's what's happening now.